<clears throat> Hello everyone, my name is Rebecca, welcome to my channel. If you are new here, I typically do homemaking videos, recipes, mom life, that kind of thing, but today I wanted to do something different and just share about my journey postpartum um, and like why, like how I got to it, yeah. So first, um, there's a lot of like family um, situations that I'm not going to go into too much detail, but I am going to tell you generalities so that you can understand the story and how things happened. So first of all, I was, you know, very pregnant with my second born. I have a daughter who had just turned two in November and January. I ended up getting induced and having my son. Um, he was overdue so that was kind of frustrating but I just have overdue giant babies um <clears throat> so I came home from the hospital my husband took four weeks off of work for paternity leave it was unpaid um like an FMLA type thing but we had been planning this so we'd been saving up our money that kind of thing um so after about two weeks of me being at home with my newborn son and my two-year-old daughter you know we're still getting adjusted to life um, as a family of four and going from one to two was a little more difficult than I thought it would be not saying that I thought it was gonna be easy but things happen differently um, so about two weeks after I had my son, um, a situation happens where my sister and my brother-in-law decide to separate and they end up getting a divorce. And my brother-in-law already had a full-time job, so obviously my sister was getting a full-time job to support herself. At that time, my sister did have their three children in um, her care, and she needed me to babysit the three children so that she could work and provide for the family. Um, you know, there was a couple stipulations where I was like, well, I can't do it every day. I'm still trying to adjust to even going from one child to two. Adding three more is going to be very difficult. Um you know, all this kind of thing. And we agreed on a, on a schedule, whatever. Um, well, um, without going into detail, some other things happened and my brother-in-law ended up with full custody of the children and I ended up babysitting them. Um, and like, I'm not making this video to say anything bad about my brother-in-law or my sister or like whoever this isn't this is just like what happened um, and I'm not complaining about the situation I think that in the moment we were all just kind of surviving we weren't really figuring out a plan for a long term we were just kind of trying to get through this divorce and be like a family um, so obviously my sister like was visiting with the children and everything else like people we were all trying to figure out like how to make things work um well it's very lonely being a stay-at-home mom so after my husband went back to work um you know for a long time i was really just surviving like uh, my my brother-in-law would get up and go to work my mother-in-law my mother-in-law would watch the kids from like 3 a.m. to like 9 a.m. or 8 30 a.m. and then she would bring them over to my house and then I would watch them and one of the two of them were in school one of them was half days every Monday through Thursday the other one was full days Monday through Friday um, I think did he have school on Friday honestly I don't remember he may not have had school on Friday and then the younger one who was the same age as my daughter who did not go to school. Um, and the reason that I am telling you about this unique situation is because I want you to understand like the stress that I was under and how isolated I felt and how um, 
I literally just felt like I was surviving. Like I would skip meals even though I was nursing. Like I felt horrible about myself. I never got five minutes to myself. Um, I never even had time to pump breast milk for my baby. So we never even got to try and see if he would take a bottle. That would have made my life easier and if I could go back and do it again, I would force myself to find some time some like to do some pumping and let my husband help me feed our baby because it was so stressful being the only source of nutrients and like also taking care of the other kids so the reason like I said I'm bringing this up is because I want you to understand the pressure and like the stress and it caused me to go into a very deep postpartum depression um I had depression and anxiety prior to getting pregnant even with my daughter um and obviously like after you get pregnant um people may not talk about this a lot but I know I struggled specifically with body dysmorphia where I like looked in the mirror and it's like I don't feel like that's my body I felt so um sorry about that I felt so like ugly I couldn't even though I just gave birth to a beautiful baby boy, I hated my body. I hated the fact that I never had time to myself. I hated the fact that I wasn't taking care of myself like nutritionally. I wasn't, obviously I wasn't working out within the first six weeks, but then even after that, I was trying to find time to do things for myself and I was just not successful. Um, I, as hobbies, I like to read books. I'm currently reading, um, little women for my book club and I like to crochet I like to go on walks and be outside like those kinds of things I was not able to really do those things during this time so fast forward to about four months postpartum and I am really struggling I am on medication for my postpartum depression I um, am looking for a therapist I um I'm trying so many things to try and make myself just feel better, like feel like a human again. Um, so I remember that during my pregnancy was the first time that my coach had reached out to me and she was pregnant also. Um, we were different gestations, but we were like close enough to where, um, you know we bonded over that and she invited me to join this accountability group like fitness virtual accountability group and I really wanted to do it um, I needed that like companionship of having other women like postpartum understand like what it's like trying to fit a workout in when you have babies literally crawling all over you or whatever um, I really wanted that however the first time that she introduced me to it when I found out that there was like an investment cost to pay for supplements and the workouts I was like I don't have money for that I'm not gonna pay for that um I really had these thoughts and you know this was I was probably about six months pregnant when this began it was the summer before so almost an entire year later I'm four months pregnant with my son I see one of her videos, like her reels to, you know, about not surviving anymore, but thriving as a mother and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, hey girl, I need this. I don't care how much it costs. I'm willing to try anything because I feel like I'm dying inside. And I literally felt like I was dying inside. Um, and it wasn't because, like it wasn't just one thing. It was a lot of things everything had been piling up like my postpartum depression my body dysmorphia the stress of having to take care of my children and my nephews and um <clears throat> and yes i could say no yeah i wanna i wanna make this clear like yes i could have said no to babysitting my nephews but in a time where things were so uncertain for them and so different I felt like they needed some consistency in their life and I am a consistent person who has been there since the day that they were born 
for the three of them, all three of them, I've been very involved in my nephew's lives. Um, so yes, I could have said no, but at this moment, like my family needed a village and I was that village and I felt, you know, in my heart that this was the right thing to do. And I know that I will not ever regret being there for my family and my nephews. Um, <clears throat> so like, anyways. <laughs> So I started the accountability group. Um, I do my first program and I was, uh, I lost three inches. I lost 15 pounds and I was feeling amazing. And I was like, I want to help other moms feel like this. Like I can help other moms feel this great, as great as I get to, because I struggled so hard with mom guilt. And the idea that I need to take time away from my kids so that I can do something for myself was just crazy to me. And it might seem silly, like, hearing me say that, but that's honestly how I felt. I felt like my duty as a parent was to devote every waking minute to my children and their needs. And, like, if I did something for myself, I was being selfish. But I'm here to tell you, like, it's okay to be selfish because as soon as I started feeling better about myself and making myself a priority, I was showing up as a better mom, as a better, like, nanny, daycare, babysitter, whatever, as a better wife, as a better friend. Um, when you're investing in yourself, that is where the difference is going to make you being the same versus you changing for the better and yes there is an upfront cost in the things that I do but it is 1000% worth like your mental health your confidence what are you willing to pay to feel the most amazing that you have ever felt in your life like what is that worth to you um, and to me, it's definitely worth the investment price that I paid. Um, and I, if I could go back, I would honestly have signed up when I was pregnant. I feel like if I had signed up when I was pregnant, then postpartum, I would not have gone into that deep depression. Even with the situation and everything that was going around, I would not have been as depressed as I was. And... Honestly, it hurts me a little bit to know that I could have prevented that at least a little bit. Like, obviously, I understand that depression is like a chemical imbalance and all of those things. And I know that I'm not cured. I still have my bad days. But knowing that I can make myself a priority and show up for myself to show my kids that they can show up for themselves also, like that's worth it to me. Um, so I started on my journey as a coach, an affiliate, whatever you want to call it. Um, and I started my business, marketing, like how you can also become your best self. And you don't have to get a babysitter to work out. You don't have to, um, spend thousands of dollars on like meal plans and supplements and all that stuff. Like you don't have to do any of that. To be your best self and to feel amazing um, you don't have to work out for hours a day in order to lose weight and you don't have to worry about judgment from other people because if I miss a workout for example right now I have an injury um, I uh, don't have a medical term for it but basically my pubic bone like has been hurting extremely bad um, I had this pain when I was pregnant and I was told that it would go away afterward when I had the baby and unfortunately it did not. Um, this has been a reoccurring injury throughout my workouts. Um, I finally got in to see my doctor about this specific situation and I am going to begin physical therapy for my pelvic floor to help with this pain. But, like, there's no judgment from the other people that I am taking time off of my phys like physically intense workouts. I am still doing stretches and trying to 
keep my body loose so that when I start physical therapy, I can get the most out of it. But I'm not getting judgment from other people. I'm not getting judgment from my coach or other moms saying like, oh, well, you don't have abs, so you must not be a fitness coach. Nobody has said that to me. Not one person. Because you don't have to be at your best physical condition to be able to help other people. Um, I, I have a mom bod. Like, I'm nursing. I have loose skin. I have stretch marks. I have all of those things. And I was ashamed before. But now I feel confident in myself. I feel stronger. I feel more capable that I can do things. Like I can go through a 30 minute workout and I'm not gonna die. I mean, I know that sounds extreme, but honestly, like when, when you first start out your workout journey, you kind of think that like you're scared because it's gonna be hard. But like you are capable, you can do this. You are capable of doing whatever you want to do as long as you're willing to invest your time or whatever else into this goal of yours. Um, <clears throat> so that is my journey postpartum, how I became like a coach slash affiliate for my uh, business. And, um, you know, I, I really try to bond with other postpartum moms who are struggling with depression, anxiety, body dysmorphia, because I want to help them. I want to help them feel as amazing as I do. So um, this is my story. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Um, I hope you subscribe and maybe even like this video if you want to see more of like me talking to the camera. I don't do a lot of videos like this. Um, and I will link down below like an application or a form that you can fill out if you're interested in the programs I am doing or that I am affiliated with. Um, and yeah, I just, I really wanted to get this video done because I want to share like what happened, what changed for me. And that was, I just got so tired of being depressed and feeling like I was dying inside when I had a beautiful family and a beautiful home and all of these things to be grateful for. And I still felt like I was dying inside. And that change to where I feel good about myself now has helped me tremendously. So thank you again for watching. I hope you subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.